Yesterday, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy admitted he had questions about George Santos's resume before the New York congressman was elected. Today, McCarthy was asked whether he raised those concerns during the campaign. Yes. You said yesterday you had some questions about his past. Did you raise concerns during the campaign season before the election? Well, I raised cons uh, my staff raised concerns when the, he had a staff member who impersonated my chief of staff, and that individual was let go when, when Mr. Santos found out about it. All right, you hear that? So, first of all, uh, the thing that he objected to, understandably, was uh, a staff member impersonating Kevin McCarthy's chief of staff to raise money. But once that guy was gotten rid of, no problem. So he didn't answer whether he acted on his questions about Santos's resume, which we now know was largely fabricated. Instead, he talked about another revelation, the one of his campaign ads impersonated McCarthy's chief of staff in calls to Republican donors, which you think would be a red flag. But hey, McCarthy said the Santos aide fired, Santos fired this aide, suggesting that for a Republican campaign worker to impersonate the House Republican leadership of staff is no big deal. While many of Santos's fellow Republican Congress members in New York are calling on him to resign, one of them, Nick Lolota, going further, calling for his campaign accounts to be immediately frozen, McCarthy is instead, well, empowering Santos by giving him two seats on not one, giving him seats on not one, but two House committees today. George Santos apologized last month for, quote, embellishing his resume, but the revelations just keep coming. I mean, they really keep coming. You'd need, like, a full-time reporter just on them about his murky past and finances, and maybe he stole his roommate's scarf to appear at the January 6th insurrection rally. There's also more evidence of just the truly mind-boggling depths of his deception. Santos didn't just make up stuff about himself. He seemed to inhabit a completely alternate fake persona, as in this newly surfaced podcast during his first run for Congress in 2020. I put myself through college and got an MBA from NYU, and I have zero debt. And my parents, uh, they helped where they could because they were rebuilding back uh, after filing for bankruptcy. Nothing comes for free. Nothing in life is free. And the harder you work for something, the more you want it. And the more you want it, the more rewarding it is. So yeah, I hate to care of it, too. I hate looking at youth today and seeing them sitting on their behinds and acting like, you know, oh, this is so hard. Don't you just hate the youth today, the whiners? Zero debt is what Santos says, the man who faced eviction twice for not paying rent. He also has, to be clear, zero college degrees, including from NYU, which he never attended. <laughs> Nothing in life is free, Santos says, except maybe committee seats in the House of Representatives headed by Kevin McCarthy. Joining me now is Congressman Dan Goldman, Democrat of New York, who said today Kevin McCarthy appears to be complicit in a scheme to defraud the voters in George Santos's district. Congressman, good to have you on. Why do you think that's the case? Why do you think he's complicit? Well, the New York Times reported over the weekend, Chris, that McCarthy and his super PAC leader uh, were aware of a uh, self-research study that Santos commissioned to determine if he had any issues that might be leveraged by an opponent, which, not surprisingly, showed, showed up with uh, a bunch of lies, not nearly as many as we now know, but enough to recognize that Santos uh, appeared, at a minimum, to be trying to pull a fast one over his, his voters. That prompted his campaign team, many of them, to resign. And that is when Chairwoman Elise Stefanik, through a top political aide, and McCarthy's uh, super PAC helped Santos hire people who could deal with the uh, self-research that he had about all of his lies. McCarthy then confirmed yesterday that he did have questions about Santos's past during the campaign, which to me confirmed the reporting in The New York Times. He then, of course, as you pointed out, avoided questions about what he actually knew yesterday, pointing to a fake resume that Santos had given to the Nassau County Republican Party. Today, talking about the chief of staff impersonation, he has yet to address exactly what lies he knew. And the more that he goes on refusing to address this leads any logical, rational person to infer naturally that he knew a lot more that he is letting on and that he may have absolutely been complicit in Santos's web of deception. 
The Times article you're referring to, this one from Friday, Santos's lies were known to some well-connected Republicans. Uh, the reporting suggesting there was kind of whispers about it after this document was produced uh, that pointed to his oppo. This is a, I want to quote from a letter uh, that you and Representative Torres, also of New York, wrote to uh, McCarthy and Stefanik and a few others. In light of recent public reporting indicating each of you had at least some knowledge, the web lies used by Congressman George Santos to deceive his voters, we write to request you proactively and forthrightly cooperate with all current and future investigations Investigations, intermits or Santos, including investigation by the House Committee on Ethics. Are you confident the timeline for those investigations is going to be sufficient? Well, I, I assume it will be. The House Ethics Committee investigation has already been confirmed that it will happen by the Speaker. And the only reason it wouldn't is if federal law enforcement officials ask them to stand down so that they can move forward with a criminal investigation, and they would almost certainly abide by that request. Uh, this is a, a growing and somewhat more sophisticated fraud scheme than uh, we might have first thought, but it is not something that should take more than a few months. Final question for you is about uh, the, the, the committee assignment here. So I, I'm kind of on two minds here, right? I mean, the fundamental issue is the deceit, the web of deceit, as you put, that got him elected. But now he's in Congress. He's not going to be expelled. The bar for that is very, very high. And there's some there's some sort of constitutional questions about that as well. If he's there, I guess I just sort of feel like not seating him on committees feels like not the right remedy for the depth of what he did. But what do you think? I agree. I, I don't think this is an issue of whether or not he sits on committees. This is an issue of whether or not he serves in Congress. He completely defrauded the voters of his district in order to get elected. He does not belong in Congress. That's the issue. If he's in Congress, whether he's on a committee or not, is beside the point. He, he, needs to be, he needs to resign, as eight Republican congressmen have called upon. And if not, then Kevin McCarthy and Elise Stefanik need to ask whether they want to have someone like George Santos in their conference who is an outright fraud. Because if he does not resign and he is not asked to resign, then that is what the Republican Party is about, George Santos. All right, Congressman Dan Goldman, freshman uh, congressman from New York, along with a bunch of new members of Congress from New York. Uh, definitely not the most famous member of that freshman New York class, I have to say. Good to see you.